Hey, this is Natalie with The Fifth Journey, and we're going to be making a cold process soap today using indigo, and I'm going to be using a fragrance oil that will be accelerating, and it also does have vanillin in it, so I'm anticipating it turning brown. It will have a brown hue, so I'm going to do a couple different things today, and hopefully I will get everything in the right order. So um, I have my indigo in my lye water, and it looks pretty funky right now. So I did um, about a teaspoon per pound of soap. I'm doing a two and a half pound batch of soap, but I just did two teaspoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this in um, to my oils that are already ready to go. And the fragrance that I'm using, um, I'm okay with it turning a little bit green. So just, I mean, it kind of depends on what I'm gonna call it. And um, we'll find out more at the end if that actually works out. So. I have a little bit of spinach powder here that has been mixed in with some of my oils that I will use as a little bit of swirl to get more of a, a, a turquoise um, green, blue-green look color. And then um, back to this, I'm using olive oil which does or can turn blue colors more green. So I didn't use more white colored oils because you can pick your oils depending on what they do to your colorants, but I'm, gonna, I'm okay with a little bit of green today. So we're gonna see how this goes, and when I unmold it, it will have a very different color than what it will when it has um, fully cured. So I think I got that all out. So again, I'm going to do this with the indigo, that's all ready to go, and then I'm going to do kind of several separate things. I'm going to pour some of it out in these three containers, and then I'm going to pour some of this, actually I'm going to blend a little bit more because I want it to be a little bit thicker. I'm going to pour it in an angle in my soap mold and then I have some cocoa powder that I'm going to do a line across the soap with and then I will add the fragrance in to only one of them actually last because that again has the vanillin in it, it will discolor to a brown which is okay um, and then also accelerate. So I have some different steps I'm going to do and let's see if I can get them all in the right order. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me give this a quick little stir really quick. So it's going to be kind of interesting because when I'm stirring, this was just distilled water with the lye and then I put the indigo in and it looks kind of green. If you can see that, it doesn't look very blue. It looks kind of green. So we're going to see how that turns out. Very inky. Okay, I'm going to go to a light trace with this. Oh, also, I didn't say this, I am soaping very, very cool. Um, this is the coldest I've done this before, so I'm actually right about at room temperature. And when you're doing that, um, it gives you a little bit more time if you have a finicky fragrance, which I'm afraid I might have. And this is really dark right now. It will actually lighten up. So um, as it cures, it does kind of look like a little bit of a navy, a navy blue. In the video, I think it kind of looks a little bit like pond scum, but we'll see. And that is actually all that I want to do right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, tap this out, and it is just, just emulsified. Set that aside. Okay, I'm gonna pour a little bit into here. Cause we're gonna do a little bit of a swirl with that. And then I'm gonna set that aside for a little bit later. Pour a little bit into here. And again, I'm not adding fragrance to these because I'm going to set these aside and I do not want them to accelerate. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a stir to mix in that green. 
And it's not much of a difference right now. But as you know, once it cures, it could look drastically different. Okay, set that aside. And I'm going to put about half. No, well, maybe not half. We'll see. Maybe about a cup or so. Two cups. All right. Put that in there. All right, I'm going to set this aside. And go ahead, and I'm going to blend this up a little bit more. So I want it to be nice and thick. All right, that is good and thick. Grab my mold. the rag real quick. I want that to be a nice angle. That's going to clash terribly with the purple mold, but that's the way it goes. It's okay. So that is good and thick, and that's exactly what I wanted. Spatula. Or my rubber scraper, rather. We called these spatulas when I was little. I don't know if people do that nowadays. When I was younger, we had, at school, we had to scrape our own trays. Everything was homemade. Oh my gosh, we had the best food growing up. Went to a small school, and everything was homemade. It was so good. I don't think anything was out of the box. Okay. Get this out of the way. I will tap to get any bubbles. And then I'm going to use some cocoa powder to make a little bit of a line. If I can get it in there. Now, kind of the look that I'm going for is a little bit of a native stone look. And as we all know, sometimes things turn out and sometimes they don't. Set that aside. So that one is already starting to set up a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the fragrance, fragrance oil to this one. And that should make it quite a bit darker. Again, it's not going to look dark right away. Because when you have anything with the vanillin in it, um, it does take time for it to darken up. I ended up actually taking a break for a couple minutes to let this harden up because it was still a little soft. So as you can see, this one is still very liquid because I, I just went to emulsification on this. And this one, remember I blended it up some more. So see how it's already set and it's not sliding over. And that is what I wanted. So we're going to go ahead, leave it here, and I'm going to add the fragrance oils to this. And then I'm going to pour in some and then level it out. Let's go ahead and start that up. Doesn't like me right now. Adding about an ounce and a half. That. 
be all of it. I did a an MP batch right before this that was um, had, had half an ounce. I'm gonna stir that in really quick. I always lay my bottles when they're empty on their side. And then right at the end, if there's any little drops left, I'll pour them in. All right, oh, it smells good. Let's slide this over a little bit. And slowly pour a little bit down there. Because I don't want to mess up that line. cocoa powder. All right. And then now that that's set, I'm going to drop it down. So let's go ahead and alternate a little bit of the two different colors. Oh, that thickened up. Wow. I'm not quite sure why that one is so much thicker. Right down the middle of that one. And zigzag again. Down the middle again. That is definitely thickening up. See that? You can see how it's mounted up on the spoon. And see how fluid that one still is. take a scraper and then just scrape the rest in. See how thick that is? So, um, and that's again why I went ahead and soaked it's such a cool temperature because usually I go between 100 to 130 degrees and I am it's probably at 70 I started when it was 80 degrees the the soap temperature so um, or the batter temperature rather get every little bit out Actually, was going to make a different type of soap this week, but my um, something happened with shipping, and about 30 minutes from my house, my package was thrown away because apparently something was broken or leaked in it. If you can see this, there are where I poured that one in. That was the one that I blended up. More, you can see it is already lighter than the other one.
and I'm going to do a little bit of a texture on the top today. Since I'm not really doing a lot with different, with very varied colors rather, that are obvious. Last one. Okay. And I forgot to do that, that's okay. Give it a good tap. And it's definitely setting up. But not quite enough yet to do anything on top. So I'm going to let it set for a couple more minutes. And then we'll texture the top. Okay, it's been about two minutes and you can see that this is still very liquid over here, but the center part is getting set up, but I need this to be more solid. So smooth that out and then I'll come back in a few more minutes and check it again. It has actually been about 10 minutes and I am going to change gears a little bit because I was going to do a little bit of texture on top. But the problem is we had that one layer where the uh, fragrance helps accelerate it. So this is still fairly soft on the sides, but if you can see that, it's set up in the middle. And that was where I had poured the, um, the batter with the fragrance in it. So doing what I had planned on doing is not going to work. So sorry that's loud. Give it some firm taps trying to knock that back down. I'm going to take some more of that cocoa powder and I'm going to tap it across the top just a little randomly and then I'm going to do a little bit of swirls as much as I can do. That little bit will have some texture but that's okay because you know what they're handmade. They're not supposed to be perfect. So just using some toothpicks, I'm going to let's see how far down I can go. Hmm. Let's do a little swirl like that. And it's actually giving it some texture just by doing that. And I can feel I'm hitting those layers underneath. So that side, let's get some batter in there. All right, there we go. So that actually gave me some nice texture. Wasn't what I planned on doing, but that's okay. So I've got a little bit of color on top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, finish cleaning up. As you can see, while I was waiting, I went ahead and cleaned up the uh, containers. I used my rags, wiped them out. I'll throw them in a bag for a few days. I'm going to spritz the top of this with some alcohol. I'm going to cover it, insulate it, let it go through gel phase, check on an hour or so, and then I'm going to check on it in 24 hours see how hard it is, um, and mold it, and then we'll come back when it is time to cut. I'm back with the soap that we just made yesterday. I did a two to one water to lye ratio. So it did take quite um, a bit less time to unmold than usual. So like I said, I just unmolded this this morning. We made this yesterday. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really concerned because 
when you watch that video, all the colors looked kind of like a swamp green. But I'm very pleased to see that we have that pretty indigo. I was very excited to see that, so I'm happy with that. I got a little excited earlier this morning. I wanted to cut off a little piece. Um, so we're going to go ahead and trim the tops, and then we'll start cutting. So as you can see, this is where we had done the chocolate powder. So it really did give somewhat of a texture. Not the texture I was initially wanting, but we still got a really neat texture with that. And um, it did go through a little bit on that. Um, and you can see the line right there from the cocoa. So right now, the green from the spinach powder is showing up the most. And we do not have the discoloration yet from the fragrance oil. That will show up here in the next couple weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the edges and then we'll cut it. And this is the first time using a, this is actually a cheese cutter. I've seen some other soapers use that and I've been watching it and this one actually came on sale because the box was damaged. And I have no problem with the box being damaged, so keep an eye on those sales. So just trim up those edges real quick. And I marked my line. And let's give it a go. Oh my goodness, look at that. Very cool. Now on the fragrance, I'm just now smelling it because I did not smell the fragrance on the actual bar. Because remember this part does not, or excuse me, on the actual loaf, this part does not have the fragrance in it because it discolors. And then a lot of the outside, because I poured um, the fragrance part on the outside and then I did the little swirls on the inside. So when I actually smelled it, I could not smell the fragrance. Um, but now that I'm cutting it and getting in those layers, now I can can smell that. So that's good. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. Those are very cool. So I'm thinking that once this does finally cure, that a lot of this should be a darker color in the brown and then we'll have the pretty blue of the indigo through there of course we had the blue there but those came out really cool now you can see there's a little bit of a texture difference through there and this is because this part was what was setting up faster than the other, and that can happen. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning up the sides, and then I'm going to put them on the curing racks. We'll come back to get a final look 